Welcome to Talking Giants Player Profiles and Projections. And today we have Nate Solder. Nate Solder is a very tricky conversation because he's not expected to be a starter. Now let's go through some of the, the, the basics with Nate Solder. They restructured his contract to where his dead cap, what if they would have cut him, is essentially his salary. So he's making that money without having to, to uh, you know, he's, he's not really costing the Giants any more than he would have than if he, they just flat out cut him which I'm sure is what they told him. If like, if we're like, we're not paying you a penny more than your dead cap hit. So they bring him back, which we talked about when, uh, when he just, when he announced that he wants to come back, it's like, Hey, if they want to bring him back for just that amount, bring him back. If not, I would look elsewhere. He's six foot eight, 325 pounds, but he looks a little light. I don't know if he's 325 pounds, 33 years old, coming off the missed season. Um, he, you know, out of all the guys that missed uh, 2020, uh, for the COVID opt-out, Nate Solder was one of the most uh, most reasonable. 127 career starts. That is the most on the New York Giants offensive line. The second most is a fellow backup in Jonathan Harrison, who had 42, with Zach Fulton's gone, who had like 79. Justin, he has 44 more starts than the entire starting offensive line together. Yeah, combined, right? Yeah. Nate Solder is going to be the backup right tackle, but maybe not the backup swing tackle. Hmm. Interesting. Well, in practice, they have been have uh, I've noticed that when Andrew Thomas is taking a rest day, they're putting Parrot at left tackle and Nate Solder at right tackle, but Parrot's also running with the one. So maybe they're simply just trying to get Nate Solder acclimated to that right tackle spot, which he hasn't played in ten years. Um. If Thomas were to go down, does Parrot slide over to left, or do they let the guy who's played left tackle for ten years play left tackle? I don't know. I, I feel like you know maybe they feel like Nate Solder's a pro's pro, and you know he doesn't necessarily need to practice at left tackle, but the spot that he does need to practice is at right tackle. So we were talking about this when we talked about Shane Lemieux going down, and what it, what do you do with Will Hernandez, where you don't want to screw up Will Hernandez a season? I would say in this hypothetical world. Andrew Thomas goes down. I don't want you to screw with Matt Parrott's season. You put Nate Solder at left tackle, question mark. But also, like you said, Bobby, he's he looks thinner. And he openly kind of admitted that, you know, he is not in the same condition that he usually is in post-COVID opt-out year and not playing football for a year. So if anything, this is probably going to be our most vague PPP because we just don't know much about Nate Solder. But what we do know, is that 2019, he is coming off a very, very bad season where he was one of the worst left tackles in the National Football League. And a lot of people got on Andrew Thomas because he was the number four pick, blah, 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 and he was a rookie. And I guess he had some expectations last year. But Nate, so Andrew Thomas in 2020, at his worst, was still better than Nate Solder in 2019, in my opinion. I've had the crazy take that Nate Solder – um, cost Pat Shermer his job. There were some games where Nate Solder kind of was just such a turnstile and it led to some Daniel Jones fumbles that if he's even just an average left tackle, Pat Shermer may still have his job in 2020. Maybe we squeak out a few wins. But yeah, I don't want to kind of dwell on that. I know you maybe want to talk about that a little bit more because you're the offensive line guy, but we just don't know what Nate Solder is going to kind of bring to the table this year because we haven't seen him in so long. And he kind of does look like a different human being also. Yeah. And, I, and I, I'm rooting for the guy. Like he's the, you know, probably like the best just human being on the team. Yeah. But yeah, in 2019, he cost the Giants games, you know, him paired with Daniel Jones fumble issue cost the Giants games or Jones was getting lit up. Sometimes it was in Jones backswing. So like, he, that's not a fumble issue. That's a guy in his backswing getting, you know, cl- you know, clobbered in 2019, he gave up 11 sacks. And we talk about how Andrew Thomas struggled. Andrew Thomas gave up 10 in 2020, even though that number is a little wrong. They, they accredited him for one in the Ravens game, which doesn't make sense, but, but I digress. I uh, also gave up five holding penalties, led the league and pressures allowed. I mean, he was very bad. But that being said, for 2020, we were mentally prepared for him to play right tackle. Like, we're like, hey, it'll right tackle, it doesn't make you a better player, but it puts you in a better situation. You know, that's why we didn't talk much about Cam Fleming towards the end of the year. It's like, was Cam Fleming playing good? No. But it's like right tackle, it's it's a position where you're you can your bad play can be a little hidden. Where left tackle, it's not because you know the blind side of a quarterback is a very real thing where it's 
It's a whole idea. Would you rather a car crash happen behind, you know, come slam you in the back or see it in front of you where you could try and avoid it? It's as simple as that. And I don't think 2019 was like a outlier year for Nate Solder where it's like, oh, his ankle was a little injured. Like, I just think he wasn't ever really that good. And that, and those numbers back up to New England, you know? I mean, in 2018 with Eli, who was, you know, quick trigger, gave up seven sacks, five holding penalties. Like, that's bad. And that's coming off of, you know, being paid the top left tackle. And even the year where he got the contract with Tom Brady, who is, you know, known for getting the ball out there just right time, gave up four sacks, 51 pressures, 51 pressures, which, you know, I think Andrew Thomas this year gave up like 50 something. And that's with Daniel Jones, who holds onto the ball uh, a long time. Tom yeah. Brady is the exact opposite. And he gave up 51 pressures. So, you know, I wasn't doing this stuff back in 2017. But if I was, I think I would have been pretty anti the solder contract. And, and the way he gets beat is kind of the opposite of the way Thomas gets beat, where Thomas, at least in the beginning of Thomas's career, would overset and allow that inside where Solder just kind of like – He opens he, up his hips. Yeah, he lets guys get around the edge, man. Yeah. So now at right tackle, you can get away with that a little more. So if he's in at right tackle, am I saying it's going to be a flat-out disaster? No, but I don't think you can have any expectation for it to be good. Yeah, I I do view, you know, it just in a vacuum, I, I guess. I do view having Nate Solder as this backup tackle slash is he a swing tackle, however you want to define that. I view that as a plus, I, I, I guess. I mean, Bobby, at this yeah. point, you were, you were talking about him having the most starts on the offensive line, and when you combine the five front guys and then you add up all their starts – there's uh, it's still less than Nate Solder's total starts. Nate Solder is the most start starts on the entire team. I'm pretty sure. And this even includes yeah. special teams guys, right? I mean, he oh, was just in, in sort of NFL. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he was the right tackle for the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 46. I mean, that's the last time that he played right tackle, at least on a consistent basis. And that was his rookie season. So, you know, we're talking about Nate Solder for the first time since Super Bowl 46. Happy 10-year anniversary, by the way. Go to the Rams game. I'll be there. Um, (laughs) For the first time since that game. And now he's going back to that position, hopefully as just a backup. You know, Bobby, give me your take on, you know, if we see Nate Solder consistently on the football field this year, you know, I I would think that this offensive line that we're really – biting our nails to almost to the skin about the state of the offensive line. If Nate Solder is on the football field for pretty consistently throughout the season. Are we, well, correct? yeah. And I really think a lot of the offense, like the biggest decider besides Jason Garrett really could be Matt Parrott. It's like, what if, if Matt Parrott's even just average, if he plays at Mike Rimmer's 2019 level, yeah. it's like this offense should have expectations. If he's piss poor, then it's like, man, it's going to be hard to get things done because the other guys on the offensive line probably aren't, like, you know, they're not going to be – none of them are going to be great besides maybe Andrew Thomas. Nick Gates is good, but, you know, the center position doesn't really affect right tackle. It's the right – it's the guard spots. So, yeah, I mean, if if Nate Solder is playing because Matt Parrott's not ready, then we're – I mean, that's – that's re- that looks really bad on Matt Parrott, which at the same time, it looks like right now that Matt Parrott is going to win that job. I mean, he started on Pup, and they immediately put him with the starters when he came off that list. So – Matt Parrott is going to get that up. Like he's going to start week one, unless it's just a flat out disaster for the rest of camp. Yeah. Stay healthy. Um, hope everybody stays healthy. You know, root for the guys in blue. You know, I think this is probably our most negative PPP episode. I think it's going to be our most negative PPP episode. You root for the guys in blue. You know, Nate Solder definitely has the backstory of a guy that you want to root for with all the good work that he does off the football field. Um, root for the guys in blue again. You know, this will probably be his last year in Giants blue and, Hopefully he goes out with a bang, wins some football games. He's a good mentor. You know, Andrew Thomas has talked about how good of a guy he is, and he's a good guy that you want to have around. You know, I know I'm not, not we're not the biggest guys on culture and leadership and mentorship. You know, we don't. That's not really what you need. I want guys that can kind of play well in the football field. But having Nate Solder here and having him as a backup is not a thing that I'm going to be like, oh, what are we doing? And no, yeah, having him as a backup at. tackle is not a disaster. Yeah. Like that, it's not. You know. Um, is now the Giants with Zach Fulton leaving. I th- it cha- I do think it changes things a lot where I wasn't really worried about the Giants' depth at O-line. The issue was like, if you look at depth around the NFL, it's like, you know, when our backups probably line up with everyone else's backups, the issues was like the backups are really close to what the starters are. I right. think that that's the issue with the Giants' offensive line, not necessarily like, oh, the, 
the backups are horrendous. Now, with, I guess that Zach Fulton leaving does change that dynamic a little bit. But it's the, it's the fact that, you know, the backups may be very close to what the starters are. So yeah. having Nate Solder as a backup is not a disaster. If he's starting, you know, 10-plus games, it very well could be. Like I said, you don't you – don't, like, if you have expectations of Nate Solder to not be a disaster, okay, you know, that's fine. Like, 2019 Power was his worst year, and, you, you know, like – you don't have to expect that to be as every year, but look at the years before and it was never really that good. So don't expect like, Oh, Nate told her bounce back. He's, he's actually good. Like, so, so I, I wouldn't expect that at all. But um, if, if you expect him to come in and be serviceable as a backup, I don't think that's crazy. No, not at all. Go Nate. I mean, we were expecting go him to be the starter at right tackle last year, you know, and we, I don't think we were, I mean, I didn't feel good about it, but I wasn't like panicked about it. Cause I know right tackles are much easier, but, is much easier to be bad out than left tackle. Go Nate Solder, go offensive line, root for the guys in blue. And Bob, that's all that I got for this PPP. We're starting our fourth week PPP. It's kind of exciting. Yeah. Decent run blocker. That's my decent run blocker. Moves there you double go. teams well and can pass them off. So there you go. You got that. All right, Nate Solder. That's the PPP. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, let's go big blue. <laughs>